This video shows you every NBA team's biggest hope for the future. There's still 11 squads who've never won a championship, some trying to get back to being contenders for the first time in decades, others in full rebuild mode. Meanwhile, the Warriors, Nets, and Bucks are trying to put together a dynasty. Stay tuned for all 30 teams' chances at achieving their goals. Head to Barrett, one man to beat, goes up, and throws it down! Before continuing, over three quarters of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed, so if you're looking for consistent NBA content, you're in the right place. Also, let's be friends. If you're on Instagram, feel free to follow me there at DFlowHoops. The Golden State Warriors' biggest hope for the future is that Klay Thompson not only returns from injury, but to the vintage version of himself. Thompson's one of the best two-way players when healthy, but since the 2019 NBA Finals, he suffered two major injuries. The first was a left knee ACL tear, and the second one was a right Achilles tear. Bouncing back to full form is not going to be easy, but if Clay can do it, the Warriors have a real shot at resuming their dynasty and becoming 2022 champs. This past season, opposing defenses were able to send two and three defenders at Curry, with the Warriors lacking the proper floor spacers to punish them. Huminga and Moody were great draft picks, but with Curry, Green, and Thompson in the back half of their prime, the Warriors don't have time to wait for those two to develop. So Golden State needs vintage clay in 2022. The veteran acquisitions highlighted by Carmelo, Russ, and Dwight will definitely improve the Lakers. When fully healthy, LeBron and AD are still the best duo in the league. Problem is, Davis was hurt last year and Braun was playing on a bad ankle. Even more than staying healthy, LA's hoping that the soon-to-be 37-year-old LeBron James defies father time and proves that the 2021 playoffs were just a fluke. We saw what James had left in the bubble, but after losing his undefeated streak in the first round this past postseason, you wonder if LeBron's days of being a Hollywood actor are about to begin. Laker fans are hoping otherwise. Houston's hoping Kevin Porter Jr. turns into the next James Harden. After lashing out due to no playing time in Cleveland, the Cavaliers traded Kevin to the Rockets for merely one second round pick in return. KPJ showed out in H-Town, averaging 17-6 for the rest of the 2021 season, which included a 50-point game. The Rockets' soon-to-be third-year man out of USC is still just 21 years old, and has some legit shot creating upside. Following a beastly playoff debut from Ice Tray, the Hawks maxed out their superstar on a five year, $207 million contract. Atlanta also inked John Collins to a five year, $125 million deal. Young and Collins have taken the Hawks from bottom feeders to contenders as the Hawks came up just two wins short of reaching the finals last year. But the East is improving, so we'll see if the two big personalities of Young and Collins can coexist, because when they can, the Hawks' attack is dynamic. When you come so close to reaching the finals, the only goal a team should have is getting there and winning it all next season. We'll see if fans in ATL have a shot at achieving the ultimate glory in a matter of months. Keldon Johnson has flashed star potential for the San Antonio Spurs. His devastating drives to the basket and raw athleticism make you question how good of a player the 21-year-old can develop into. It's crazy to think he was picked all the way down at number 29 in the 2019 draft. 2021 was Johnson's first real season after playing only 17 games in his rookie year, and the efficiency was solid for his lack of experience. The Spurs have hope for DeJounte Murray, Derek White, and Lonnie Walker, but there's not a player the organization has more belief in than Keldon Johnson. There's no messing around for the Milwaukee Bucks organization after securing their second title in franchise history. They're going for a dynasty. Giannis is the most humble, loyal, and likable player and has developed into one of the faces of the NBA and he has the perfect supporting cast by his side to win the organization multiple rings over the course of the next decade. Chris Middleton's the Kobe to his Shaq and is the team's closer. Drew Holiday's the team's second playmaker in the pick and roll, and Big Bobby Portis is the 3 and D big man off the bench. On top of that, Milwaukee's extremely well managed by coach Mike Budenholzer, so they have every formula 
for a sustained winning. The Nets' big three barely played together in the 2021 season, and that lack of rhythm built up cost them in the playoffs. Kyrie went down in the first round, Harden injured his hamstring against the Bucks, forcing Durant to carry the entire scoring load. Despite a rough season, the Nets still have the best big three in the NBA when fully healthy, and at full strength, they're the favorites to win it all in 2022. After a season where he came up just short of winning the Rookie of the Year trophy, now it's time for Anthony Edwards to add new elements to his game and become a star player. The Timberwolves need a legit second score next to Carl Anthony Towns, and Edwards is more than capable of being that guy. Luckily, Cat is locked up through 2024, so Ant has some time to grow into the player that Minnesota's front office needs him to be. Selecting Cade Cunningham first overall, the hope for Detroit basketball fans is that the Oklahoma State product turns around the Pistons franchise, similarly to how Luka Doncic and Trey Young have turned around their respective teams. The expectations are off the charts for the 19-year-old, but he's got the craftiness, talent, and flair to make the Pistons great again. Cade's summer league debut was decent, but I think he'll be able to provide some spark for fans in the Motor City. The Pistons will take anything at this point. Like he handled his decision to leave Toronto, Kawhi took his sweet time deciding where he wanted to go in this year's free agency. The injured Claw, who will miss the entirety of the 2022 season with a partially torn ACL, ultimately decided to stay in his hometown of LA and the terms of the deal are still being discussed. Regardless of whether Kawhi signs a two-year deal or a four-year deal, LA's going to need to see the Toronto Raptor version of Kawhi before he likely teams up with someone else in the future. After winning the Breakthrough Athlete of the Year at the ESPYs, now it's time for LaMelo to take the next step in his career. If he comes into next season thinking about his accomplishments in 2021, then he's going to have a sophomore slump. But what a freshman NBA campaign it was for Melo. The Rookie of the Year suffered a wrist injury which messed up his rhythm, but he still became the youngest player of all time to record a triple-double and put up a solid 16-6. The Hornets' biggest hope for the future is that Melo increases those stats to 20-10. and 10. We'll see how much he improves in 2022, and it'll be fun to see him finally get to play behind a full-capacity crowd, given he was a COVID rookie and didn't get to experience that. Here's hoping we don't get any more tyrannical lockdowns. The Suns have unfinished business after getting two wins from their first title in franchise history. Chris Paul extended a deal that sets him up to earn $30 million when he's 39 years of age, but the Suns had no choice to bring back their Hall of Fame point guard. Paul's chemistry in the pick and roll with DeAndre Ayton is only getting better, and every young player on their team developed their game specifically because CP3 joined the squad last year. The two-time All-Star DeMontis Sabonis is already damn good. The 6'11 Lithuanian ranked fourth in the NBA in rebounding, led the Pacers in assists, had a team leading 48 double-doubles and a franchise record nine triple-doubles. But if he could start hitting, say, 38 to 41 percent from three-point range as opposed to 32 percent, which he shot this past season, the Pacers would elevate in the East standings next year, and DeMontis would elevate his reputation. Right now, he's looked at as a fringe star, but if the 25-year-old adds more finesse, maybe he could eventually earn the reputation as a superstar. Jamal Murray tore his ACL near the end of last season, which was heartbreaking for the Denver Nuggets. But since the recovery time for NBA players who tear their ACL usually takes around a year, fans in the Mile High City should expect the Blue Arrow to be back just before the start of the 2022 playoffs. Murray's proved to be a dominant playoff performer up to this point, and he was certainly missed in the Nuggets' second round series exit to the Phoenix Suns. The Sixers want four first round picks along with a star player in return for Ben Simmons. They're going to have to lower their asking price because the Aussies value has taken a significant dive after last year's playoffs. Due to a lack of belief in his offensive repertoire, Simmons passed up wide open driving lanes. Also, his form and confidence at the free throw line 
leaves a lot to be desired. So if Philly fans want to be rid of the man who causes them so much frustration, they better hope Elton Brand finds a home for the former number one pick. I'm genuinely stunned that the Chicago Bulls haven't maxed out their gold medalist and all-star Zach Levine. As I made a separate video on, the Bulls' pickups of Lonzo Ball, Alex Caruso, and most notably DeMar DeRozan should put them in the playoffs in 2022. But with how Zach Levine's stayed loyal to Chi-Town while growing into an extremely efficient 27-point score, you'd think the organization's first priority would be maxing out their go-to score. Levine's going to be a free agent in 2022, but Chicago was definitely one of the winners of this year's free agency. The bad news is, Marvin Bagley now has gone three consecutive seasons without improving. The good news is, he's still just 22 years old. Since being selected second overall by Sacramento in 2018, Kings fans have been praying for the development of Bagley, but instead, all he's left the fan base thinking is, You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. Okay. De'Aaron Fox needs a running mate up front, making it even more crucial that Marvin develops this year. Kobe once demanded a trade from the LA Lakers, and the management refused to trade him, traded for Pau Gasol, and instead, Kobe remained a Laker for life. The Blazers should be trying to keep Lillard a Blazer for life, which is much easier said than done. The superstar point guards made it clear that he's ready to move on, and nowadays, organizations always give in to the pressure of trade requests. Look for Dame to be gone before the 2022 trade deadline and potentially even this offseason, but fans in Rip City are hoping the front office keeps Dame time ticking in Portland. If it wasn't clear by the multiple Raptor videos I made, then I'm saying it now. Toronto's front office made a very solid decision to draft Scotty Barnes over Jalen Suggs. Don't get me wrong, Suggs could be the rookie of the year and an all-star in a year or two for Orlando. But Masai Ujiri and Bobby Webster took a man with Giannis upside and the best perimeter defender in the draft. Scotty's going to make the Raptors' defense elite, but the biggest hope for the future is not only his development, but keeping the man who drafted him in Masai Ujiri. I know he just signed an extension, but I'm talking keeping him forever. Masai is responsible for the organization's longest tenure of winning, and it's not even close. And of course, the first championship banner to be flown north of the border is all because of the moves he's made. Losing in the play-in tournament is the definition of being stuck in the middle. That's what happened to the Wizards this past season, and they'll finish in the same spot in 2022 without improvement from Rui Hachimura. The number nine pick from 2019's draft looks like the next Kawhi Leonard at times with his six foot eight frame. So far this offseason, the Wizards have traded Westbrook to LA in return for Kuzma, Harrell, KCP, and a pick. Fairly decent return. They also signed Spencer Dinwiddie to a three year, $54 million contract. The hope for Wizards fans is that Rui becomes a primary scorer next to Beal and Dinwiddie. Even with the three-time Defensive Player of the Year on their team, Utah failed to close out on the Clipper three-point shooters in the second round of the playoffs, and it cost them. To me, I have to put all the blame on Rudy Gobert for not being vocal enough back there and not leading by example. Salt Lake City fans are desperate for more defensive leadership, and Mike Conley, who they just extended, needs to stay healthy. I thought the Jazz were built for the 2021 finals, but their youth showed itself, so we'll see if D. Mitch and Rudy can bounce back in 2022. Cleveland's looking for their young guard tandem to develop into an elite backcourt this upcoming season. Colin Sexton and Darius Garland's playing styles mesh perfectly, and they're both electric talents. Sexton can give you 25 on a nightly basis, while Garland likes to run the show in the pick and roll like the traditional point guard that he is. In their young careers, both Colin and Darius have stepped up their game in every statistical category, so if they take another step forward in 2022, that could be enough to get the Cavs into the playoffs for the first time without LeBron since 1998. After tearing it all down, Oklahoma City GM Sam Presti now owns a remarkable 36 picks over the next seven years. They own 18 first and second round picks, 
keeping track of 36 draft picks can be tough, and that's not even accounting for protections and swaps. But simply making good use of those picks is what OKC fans are hoping for. The Thunder just locked up Shea Gilgis Alexander on a five-year, $172 million contract, implicating that management expects SGA to be the face of the franchise. Along with Shea, I like my fellow Canadian Lou Dort as well, but with all their picks, this team's going to look completely different within the next few years. I'll be keeping my eye on OKC's rebuild for sure. Orlando's the prime example of the strenuous effort that it takes to become a contending team in the NBA. Ever since Dwight Howard left the team nine years ago, the Magic have had a miserable decade, which included six straight years of being bottom feeders and then just two playoff wins. 2019 versus Toronto, and in 2020 versus Milwaukee, Orlando won the first game of the series and then lost four straight games. Last year, they moved Vucevic, Gordon, and Fournier at the deadline and ended up winning just 21 games right back to the bottom. So, the Magic's first attempt at getting back to the franchise's glory days in the mid-90s failed. Only thing they can do now is swallow their pride and give a rebuild a second chance. Brown and Tatum have grown into one of the better duos in basketball. The problem is they have limited talent around them in Beantown. Until Danny Ainge can get another go-to scorer on this team, someone who you can give the ball to to create a few shots in a row other than JT or JB, the Celtics will continue to come up short of reaching the finals. Jalen and Jason are overwhelming for defenses and are capable of carrying the majority of the offense, so the Seas just need a Drew Holiday type acquisition to make things click. For the Memphis Grizzlies, finding Ja Morant some running mates over the next few years will be crucial. DeLon Brooks was a solid second option last year, but Brandon Clark struggled with his efficiency after a phenomenal rookie season. The Grizzlies supporting cast added two average veteran players in Steven Adams and Eric Bledsoe, so the biggest hope that Memphis fans have for the future is their front office acquiring some more talent around one of the best young players in the league in Ja Morant. Jimmy Butler will have to average more than 14 points like he did in the 2021 playoffs, but fans in South Beach have one goal for their basketball team next year, and that's to get back to the NBA Finals. Remember, just like the Lakers, Miami was a victim of American Major Sports' shortest amount of time between the Finals and the start of the next season. That lack of rest after the bubble definitely took a toll on Butler. Bam Bam just had a great stint with Team USA, and his fifth year should see him take another leap towards perennial all-star status. With Kyle Lowry now running the show, the Heat's floor general has championship experience, which should go a long way. New Orleans just had Stan Van Gundy for a one-year stint, where his old-school style predictably didn't mesh with Zion and the Young Pels. Back in 2013-14, Monty Williams, the man who just led Phoenix to the finals, was the coach of the Pelicans. In fact, Williams was only given four years as head coach. For the next five years after that, leading up to 2021, Alvin Gentry was the coach. Stan Van Gundy was only given a year, but for the best interest of their young stars, Williamson and Ingram, the team needs to pick a stable head coach and keep them. We'll see how Willie Green does in his first year. Doncic just signed a five-year, $207 million extension, but if the Mavs want to compete for championships and therefore keep the Slovenian sensation a Mav for life, then they need to get Luka some goddamn talent to play with. Tim Hardaway Jr. you just gave $74 million to, which I'm indifferent about, but hopefully Porzingis can stay healthy, JJ Reddick's efficient from deep, and Hardaway lives up to that contract. Don't worry, Mavs fans, I didn't forget about the pickup of Reggie Bullock. Go see the grade I gave that deal in this video right here. But the hope for Mark Cuban's Mavs is that Lucas stays happy, so they have to give him whatever he wants and fulfill his every need. Doncic is easily a top five player, and the potential to become the next GOAT is still on the table, given he's just 22 years old. The New York Knicks are coming off an amazing season. 
Despite going down swiftly to the Hawks in the first round, Julius Randle won Most Improved Player of the Year, and R.J. Barrett's sophomore season saw my fellow Torontonian make steady progression. Now it's time for New York's number three pick from 2019 to develop into a shining star under the bright lights of the Big Crapple. MSG's not an easy place to compete in for 41 games each season, but it's something Barrett's persona is built for. We'll see what RJ's third season has in store. Let me know which team you're most excited to see next year in the comments. Hope you have a great day. DFlow signing off.